Yeah, let's now discuss how backpropagation works for CNNs. And I recommend you, yeah, maybe to make a tea, get really comfortable, because that might take a couple of hours. Of course, I was just kidding. I just want to give you the big picture overview here, because I feel like I already tortured you enough with computing the gradient of the loss function with respect to the weights and so forth when we talked about single layer neural networks and multi-layer perceptrons. So here I just want to give you the big picture overview because yeah, no one really likes to do these uh, or derive these things by hand and in practice many people or most people use autograd anyways. But I think it's still useful to kind of understand what's going on, uh, let's say, uh, in the big picture scale. So how does backpropagation work uh, in CNNs? So that's essentially the same concept that we used before in the context of multi-layer perceptrons. But here yeah, we are applying the multivariable chain rule because we have now these weight sharing constraints where we apply the weight, uh, the same weight to different regions on uh, in the image. So I try to um, simplify this like with a very simple sketch here. So for instance, uh, imagine you have two different types of inputs and then yeah, you compute these activations by using a weight, but here you are using the same weight. Let's say it's the same W i here. And then from these activations, you compute some output and then you compute the loss. So essentially, uh, by the way, I copied most of the notation from an earlier slide, just modified it a slightly, but most of it should be familiar to you. So now when we are computing, what we're interested in when we are computing the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the weights, or the one weight here for gradient descent. What we do is, like always, we backtrack. So we start here, the partial derivative of the loss with respect to the output. Then we go here. Oh, let me use a different color here. We go from he from here to here. We compute the partial derivative of the output with respect to the activation. And then we compute the partial derivative of that activation with respect to the weight. So that is one path here. So this is essentially here, the upper path. And then we can do the same thing for the lower path. So here we compute also the same partial derivative of the loss with respect to the output. Then we compute the partial derivative of the output with respect to A2. And then the partial derivative of A2 with respect to W1. This is the lower path. And then here we just add them together because that's the multivariable chain rule. And that is essentially yeah, what's happening in the convolutional network. Of course, you have many layers and um, that would be a little bit complicated to draw. But yeah, just for simple purposes, what's essentially happening is that we are sliding our filter or kernel over the image. So here, this is the convolution when we are sliding it over the image. And like I said before, the kernel, this is like a, let's call this here W, it's a matrix. In this case, it's a three by three matrix. And we are using the same weights. So here we have nine weights that we are reusing. So the red line here, or the, this, this weight here, for instance, let's call that W1. This computes this um, one part of this first value here. So when we compute this, it's essentially the sum of the weighted inputs. So W1 times X1 plus W2 times X2 and so forth. And um, we do the same thing here at the bottom for this one. For instance, is, uh, let's call it W2. But in this case, the W2 is the same as W1. So they are both really the same because we are using the same filter that we are just sliding here over, over the image. And in that way, it's essentially then also the multivariable chain rule. So when we compute the partial derivative of the loss with respect to this W1, we compute that in um, two parts. We compute it once for, um, for the upper path here and once for the lower path. And um, there might be differences, of course, because usually we have many layers in between. So there might be differences um, how these partial derivative looks like look like for this one let's call the other one w2 at the bottom here while w1 and w2 are the same 
um, in between things might look a little bit different because we have many layers in between and then in practice usually when um, we compute the weight update for those two weights what we usually do is we average over them so oh, you don't have to average this is like optional you can actually skip that but you like using the multivariable chain rule you would combine these two partial derivatives for both regions but yeah this is all i wanted to really say about backpropagation in cnns it's essentially the multivariable chain rule and um, yeah we have this weight sharing con um, constraint in practice i will not ask you to implement that or anything like that because yeah in practice we are from here now on just using pytorch for that and pytorch will handle this automatically for us and i will at the end of this lecture show you how we train convolutional networks in pytorch it's actually simpler than you might think <laughs>